The views expressed in this blog are hosted on my own website, are strictly personal and do not reflect the views of any organization. Hello and welcome friends once again to Straight Bat, my weekly video blog where as the title suggests I comment with a straight bat. Now this is the age of viral videos. Videos must go viral for them to be seen as truly successful is what we are all told today. More often than not when someone says something controversial or provocative it's far easier for that video to go viral than if someone offers a well analyzed but more detailed argument because this is the era of the soundbite of limited attention spans. Therefore, it's the power of the viral video that one is slowly coming to terms with and I realized this uh, at the India Today Mumbai conclave that was held last week. I interviewed one Professor Salvatore Barbones. Uh, now you might ask Salvatore who? Uh, because let's be honest, uh, I hadn't heard uh, about this professor till uh, a few days ago and neither I'm sure had most of audiences here in India. Uh, so what was it that he was suddenly being pitched as a star guest at the prestigious India Today conclave was a question that I asked myself and I'm sure you might have asked uh, had you been there at the conclave? Uh, at the breakfast table where the conclave was going on, I exchanged a few pleasantries with Professor Barbones. I asked him whether he was of Greek origin and he said yes. And uh, we agreed that we'd meet before the interview and discuss what was going to be the theme of it. Now the theme uh, came from a research paper that uh, Professor Barbones had written or rather an article, let's be uh, clear an article that he had written not too long ago which was titled democracy at 75 Indian democracy at 75 who are the barbarians at the gate this was an article that had questioned the basis of the democracy rankings that are put out by global uh, think tanks and rankings that had actually suggested that India was less than a perfect democracy, that India's democracy was sliding into an elected autocracy and that India's ranking was getting lower and lower under the Modi government. Now, Professor Barbones was challenging some of the basis for which organizations like the Economist Intelligence Unit, Freedom House, uh, VDEM, the Swedish based organization had questioned India's democracy rankings. Professor Barbones was questioning the basis on which these rankings had been done. Uh, let me quote what he says. He claimed in a way in, in this article that Indian democracy had got a bum rap. This is an American slang term for an unfair claim that someone has committed a crime or done something wrong. Now his argument is despite a vibrant free press, independent judiciary, and years of free and fair elections, why had India gained this reputation of being an authoritarian state bordering on fascism under the Modi government? According to the professor, this was an unfair argument that simply did not stand scrutiny. Why, for example, he argued was Hong Kong ahead of India when it came to freedom of press. Uh, it seemed an interesting argument prima facie one clearly that would raise a few eyebrows and hackles there I say. Now just ahead of the interview that I did with Professor, I had a brief discussion with him and we went through some of the precise arguments that he intended to make. Uh, he told me interestingly that this was his first visit to India, that he had never been to India before and uh, he was looking forward to exploring the country. To be honest, that surprised me because how is someone who's, ranking, who's writing authoritatively on Indian democracy also someone who has never visited India and actually uh, traveled across the country? Uh, but I desisted the temptation to query him about this because I felt that all the contentious issues should be left to the actual interview that was going to take place on stage. Uh, 
he seemed to be an engaging, affable person, a Sydney-based American academic. And uh, when I researched uh, on him, I could sense that he was a partial to the right wing. Uh, in a way, some would argue a Trumpian, but I don't want to use names here, but someone who in a sense was arguing against uh, the left liberal elite, both in America and indeed here in India. Uh, so when the interview starts, a little midway into it, the professor made a stunning claim on the reason why he believed that the democracy rankings were flawed. India's intellectual class is anti-India as a class and not as an individual, is what the professor claimed. This was the short, sharp soundbite. He claimed that it was these intellectuals that had allowed their biases to creep in, and that's the reason. Now, the short clip of that video on Twitter alone has garnered more than 1.4 million views and counting on Facebook and other places on social media being widely shared, especially by right-wing pro-Modi groups. Uh, and interestingly, there was even applause in the audience when the professor made this statement. I was also trending as the interviewer, especially as the internet army of the Hindu right, as I call them, felt that I had been schooled and taught a lesson by an American professor. On the flip side, the moment the interview was over, I got a series of messages on WhatsApp from friends and acquaintances saying, who is this professor to judge Indian democracy? We don't need certificates of patriotism from this guy. Why have you allowed him to misuse the platform of India today to make such statements? And someone else made an even more damaging claim, claiming that Professor Barbones was actually a foreign agent and we should have had a full and transparent disclosure about it. Now, ironically, a few of those who raised this foreign agent point were also happy to have Professor Barbones meet them in Delhi when he traveled from Mumbai. Uh, but what was clear is that the professor had polarized opinion makers. The responses, in a way, typified the problem we confront as a society today. An American professor was making a sweeping proposition, yes, one that I personally didn't agree with because I felt he was unfairly, unfairly conflating being anti-government, as many left liberals are with the rise of the Modi government, with being anti-India. He was making, therefore, the same mistake I felt that many do while referring to critics of this government as urban naxals, as Khan market gang, and worse. Likewise, those who were angry at what the professor had said were also guilty of calling him a Modi bhakt, a government stooge, a foreign agent. How does one have a healthy dialogue, my friends, when there is so much name-calling around us? Professor Barbones' views, in my view, deserve a counter response. One based on facts and not on name calling. Which democracy, for example, would allow a journalist like Siddiq Kappan to be arrested and kept under jail under UAPA for two years under charges that are extremely sketchy and totally unproven? Which democracy would allow political leaders in Jammu and Kashmir to be kept under arrest for months on end, including former chief ministers? Which democracy would allow cases of lynching of minorities not to be prosecuted in the manner that they should? Which democracy would allow a 22-year-old environmental activist like Disha Ravi to be arrested under sedition and charged with promoting an online anti-government toolkit? Which government or which democracy would see opposition leaders arrested on money laundering charges but those aligned with the government being let off? Which democracy would allow charges to be filed against journalists who expose a midday meal scheme? Which democracy would allow a professor to be arrested for a Facebook post criticizing a chief minister? Which democracy would allow police in one state to walk into another to arrest someone who's seen as a political opponent? Which democracy would see MLAs being herded into resorts to bring down an elected government? Which democracy would allow an opaque electoral bond system 
to completely in a way skew and create a one-sided electoral system. These are the issues that need a fact-based debate. These are the issues that need a debate not on rhetoric but on arguments based on hard data. If that debate is held, maybe even in a US presidential style system between Professor Barbones and his critics, I think we might actually be able to shed more light than heat about the state of Indian democracy. Think about it. That was the straight back. Do of course subscribe to my YouTube channel for many more such videos. For now, stay well, stay safe. Jai Hind. Namaskar.